Got my guitar, I've got my wine Where we can go We've had the honour, haven't we Justin, along this journey of meeting some of the great legends of Australian wine, but none perhaps as influential and as iconic as this man that we are about to meet. Peter Lehman himself has invited us into his kitchen, affectionately known as the Barossa Boardroom. So many important decisions in the Barossa are made around this very table. Decisions that have shaped the Barossa that is today. How on earth did you score an invite, Jess? I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. That's. <laughs> Can I just say, <laughs> fine work, son. This Cheers. is an honour. Let's not keep waiting. Yeah, let's do it. I know some people, they say they're friends, but when your back is turned, Home, Peter and Margaret Lehman. Not bad. It's beautiful. <laughs> Real lucky. I'm a lucky man. Cause I don't need no people like Great you. man, Peter Lehman. What's your footing? Hi. So you're Peter. Here. Andre. Yes, sir. And Justin, g'day. G'day, Justin. Nice to meet you, Peter. Thank you. Come in. Hello. Hi, I'm Margaret. Andre, lovely Hello, to meet you. Andre. Hello, Margaret. I've been visited by celebrities. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this, this is... Miles isn't that famous, is he? I've heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I called you. <laughs> we paid him to uh, fill it up. So this is, this is the boardroom. This is Pretty the well. awesome boardroom that I hear so many, much about. Many decisions have been made here. I always think it's much better in the kitchen. The old <laughs> so I see that's the Margaret, Margaret. <laughs> it is. Well, I just love this one. <laughs> Funny that. She always reckons when she carks and they open her veins, nothing but semi on will flow, <laughs> not a drop of blood. I used to say semi on <laughs> reminds man, so. me of what a good mother is or should be. Always reliable, always there when the children come home from school never ever makes those soggy tomato sandwiches and it ages beautifully. Mm. Well, we absolutely fell in love with Semyon in The Hunter. So yeah, I don't know. the name Cheryl, no doubt. Yeah, we, we, uh, Murray, makes him all right. The late Murray and I were very, very close friends and uh, as have been also with Bruce, his son, in the last couple of years we've won top honours at the Sydney International with the Semyon and uh, Bruce jokingly said it rang up and said, you know, well done. So said, can I have a job? He said, I want to come down and learn how to make semi on <laughs> The following year, uh, they topped us, I rang up <laughs> said, the original uh, semi on maker, I said, any chance of a job? So it goes forth. You know. The other reason I love semi on in summer, it is the only wine you can drink with fresh tomato soup. You think of the acid in tomatoes, and we get lots of tomatoes from the garden, and so during summer, just make a really simple tomato soup and then add some basil. I might add she finds a reason in winter to drink it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I'm only allowed a couple of drinks a day, so uh, I piss around with the, that sissy stuff and <laughs> get to my real love. Now, is that sure Margaret's has. orders or doctor's orders? No, doctor's. Okay. I cannot. For the life of me, understand the absolute obsession with Sauvignon Blanc. Oh God, you're talking, you're preaching to the converted here. <laughs> I agree with you. Lynn Evans and I had one thing in common: we both did not have a strong predilection for Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> That's a very polite way to say it. <laughs> in fact, uh, if I'm offered a Sauvignon Blanc, I quite often say, "Well, actually, I prefer my wine before it's been through the body." <laughs> Not long ago, we were just ready to have the big party for hitting 100,000 cases of semi on sales, and the bloody New Zealanders invaded. Mm. People fell in love with Sauvignon Blanc, and we're now. Peter, this is being recorded. A little bit. <laughs> hey, we've said the same, don't you worry about that. Oh, that's right, it's the truth. We're. we're uh, down to about 50,000 cases. You know, just amazing how people's tastes change. 
There's a lot of aggressive here. If you could, you could, on the grower base. If you could predict what the people are going to drink in three or four years' time, it takes three or four years to change the varieties, you could make a bloody fortune. I remember when I first put a white fronty out, and uh, Evans at that time was, Dean Evans that is, was writing a cellar master for the bulletin. He rang me and he said, uh, that's a pretty good wine, Steve, and he said, uh, what would you recommend I serve it with? You serve it with, I said, uh, with a per uh, highly perfumed Turkish harlot. Lady, you didn't say. You <laughs> said lady. <laughs> Who yeah. put the harlot in? I think Peter just did. <laughs> <laughs> I did say with a highly Speaking from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. She's still what we call an Auslander, an outsider. <laughs> She's only been here 40 years. So I'm fifth generation. My family came, my mother's side came much earlier than his family. Only no. seven years. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the beginning. Margaret's uh, mother's family, a family called Caldecott, who lived up in the Adelaide Hills and were orchardists. As far as uh, bloodlines are concerned, I'm pure crowd and uh, she's pure pom. Pure pom. Uh, the outcome of World War Two, you know, changes from time to time. Yes. <laughs> you can appreciate. <laughs> well, the only time the reason the bloody Germans lost the war was all the good ones were out here fighting against them. <laughs> God bless the more recent immigrants yeah, because my yeah. mother was not a good cook. She didn't come <laughs> from her. And, yeah, and well, it's just, amazing the... Uh, Barossa cuisine, uh, a mixture of English and German. You, between them, they evolved a unique cuisine. A lot of it evolved around uh, smoked foods as well, but yeah. also some great recipes. You know, cucumber salad. No one is safe in the Barossa unless they can make a cuey salad. I think it's actually still a bit in the fridge from those days. Tiny bit. Yeah. You'll just grab it. And yeah, feel free to uh, <laughs> educate us. Oh, it's so, that's really you, good. <laughs> that's you right. Peel and slice the kiwis, salt them fairly heavily, and then put a weight on them so you bleed them, get rid of all the moisture, tip that out, finally chop up some onion, toss that in, then just uh, vinegar to taste and cream. And that's kiwi salad. Just do a bit of dill? Traditionally serve it with roast lamb, with roast beef, with roast chook, with roast duck. In other words, you think it's the condiment of choice. It's a, it's a great dish. I find it fascinating, and I don't know what, why the hell I haven't had more exposure to the Barossa since I moved to Adelaide, because having a German family and growing up, I mean, I come here and I go, oh, wow, this is what I was raised on. I am now ashamed that I was ashamed of my ancestry during the Second World War because I was almost made to feel not only in the Barossa, okay, but uh, in Adelaide and other places, you know, you were called a little Fritz or Hun or something, and uh, I was so humiliated sometimes. Now I'm ashamed that I was actually ashamed of my. Uh, I have just about had my two glass of lemons, but I'll make an exception. <laughs> May I say, such a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it's just